Hello everyone, and today we're going to be learning about the presidency of John Adams. And later on we're going to be looking at the question, is he really one of the quote-unquote worst presidents of all time? Yes, you might have heard of John Adams before, he's very famous, but as a president he's come under a lot of criticism, um, and quite a bit of criticism in recent literature. So we'll look at what he did um, and why maybe some people didn't think he was a very good president. So let's begin. First of all, we have to put John Adams' presidency in context. As you guys have been studying, he inherited a country that was going through some pretty difficult times. Here's a political cartoon, um, a recent one that had to do with the Jay Treaty. When George Washington left the presidency, he made two very controversial decisions. One, to not get involved in the war between England and France. And two, to sign the Jay Treaty that uh, kept the peace with England. And here in this cartoon you see that the people that signed the Jay Treaty, they're holding the Jay Treaty in their hand, said, as promised, we are not being attacked by the British, and then they're being attacked by their own people. The South in particular did not like the Jay Treaty because they believed that it favored England and favored the North and really didn't do much for the country. So Adams begins his presidency in the midst of this controversy with England and France and the Jay Treaty. So he inherits a country that's split um, down the line between England and France. As we already talked about, the Jay Treaty angered the South and the French, and they were not very happy. So Adams is going into this situation, he's thinking, you know what I need to do? I need to make the South happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a similar treaty to the Jay Treaty, but with France, and keep the peace with them. So he sends some people over to France to smooth things over and try to make a treaty with the French and keep peace with both sides. Adams wants to follow in George Washington's footsteps and keep the country neutral. So Adams really meant well. He really wanted to negotiate a peace with France as well as England. But what he didn't expect was the way the French would treat us when we got there. And that was called the XYZ Affair. So as I already said, Adams sends these, dip these diplomats to France to try and make peace. And France is just really, really mad at us because of the Jay Treaty and because we wouldn't help them. So when our diplomats get to France, the French leaders refuse to even talk to our diplomats. They send their, basically their cronies or their, you know, servants to see our diplomats, which is a big slap in the face, just as it is. Then those cronies, those, those henchmen for the leaders, they decide to ask for a bribe just to talk to the French. Of course, our diplomats refused. So basically, they wanted us to pay them to talk peace with them, which was, they didn't even think that we would do that. That was just an insult. So when the diplomats get back from France, they refer to the French um, henchmen that asked for this bribe as X, Y, and Z, hence why it's called the X, Y, Z affair. Obviously, people in the North this time are furious with the X, Y, Z affair. They want to support England against France in the war. And now, this to them, this is reason why we should go to war with France. And in addition, the United States get, gets laughed at by other countries. Here's actually a, a political cartoon from a British newspaper. And you can see the American soldier kneeling in front of the French with this giant bag of money. And the French are paying him no attention. It's an insulting cartoon. So not only did this XYZ affair infuriate the North but it also made the United States sort of the laughing stock of the world. On a side note, as I was looking for XYZ Affair pictures, apparently somebody named their band at one point in time the XYZ Affair. I wish I was there on November 13th of whatever year this was to see the XYZ Affair, and I will be searching for their music on iTunes because that's awesome. My dream, by the way, is for someone to name their dodgeball tournament team Shays Rebellion. That's yet to happen. Anyway, moving on. So because of the XYZ affair, John Adams is put in a difficult situation. First of all, he has all these people that want war, especially the Federalists in the North. They want to go to war with France. And on the other side, he's all these people that are mad at him for the Jay Treaty, which really wasn't even his fault. So as these tensions are rising, people are, are getting what's called war fever. They're calling for war, and people that don't want war... Well, they're getting very scared. They're scared that French people might be spying for France and giving information back. It's really quite a mess. So John Adams is persuaded to sign this law called the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Alien Act allowed the president to kick people out of the country. 
in particular, French people out of the country, if he thought they were French spies. This Alien Act also stopped French immigration to the United States. The Sedition Act was actually probably even worse. Basically, what the Sedition Act does is it makes illegal any and all criticisms of the U.S. government. So it takes away freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Both of these acts, by the way, are against the Bill of Rights. Adam signs them anyway. Here's another political cartoon. You see the sedition bills is the snake, and it's scaring away free press, free speech, and honest opinion. And basically what happens after the Alien and Sedition Act, well, you can imagine the people are quite upset, angry mobs everywhere. This is a Simpsons angry mob that I like that. Um, the Republicans hated the Alien and Sedition Acts as they took away rights, and they were also aimed at French people. So two things that they liked the Alien and Sedition Acts take away. Southern states actually got so upset that they tried to nullify the laws, which meant they wouldn't follow them. Back then, the Supreme Court did not have any authority. It was just getting set up, so the Supreme Court didn't even know that it could say that the Alien and Sedition Acts was unconstitutional. So the states actually took it into their own hands and tried to get rid of the law. That didn't work very well, and um, they actually tried to do that again before the Civil War, so we'll come back to nullification later in the year. The Republicans attacked Adams in the newspapers. They called him a, a king. They referred to him as King Adams in public. And John Adams' reputation basically crumbled apart because of the Alien and Sedition Acts. I dare you, Google John Adams' presidency. I guarantee people are bashing him because he took away freedom of speech and the Alien and Sedition Acts. However, one thing that Adams did do is, be, even though his reputation was ruined by the XYZ affair and the Alien and Sedition Acts. You could argue that that law, as wrong as it was, actually could have benefited the country. First of all, the United States never went to war. Adams keeps the country neutral. He keeps the country at peace with France and at Britain, which was very difficult to do. Um, shortly before his presidency was over, France does negotiate a peace treaty with the United States. So even though it took a while, it did work out. The Alien Sedition Acts were against the First Amendment, but they succeeded in keeping the United States out of war. And that's really what Adams was trying to do. So, we have to decide, is John Adams the power-hungry king who took away freedom, as Thomas Jefferson and the Republicans would want you to think? Or, is John Adams the guy who sacrificed his own reputation to keep peace? Next class, you will decide... Dun, dun, dun. And I'll leave you with this quote from John Adams. There is one thing I would like to be remembered for more than anything else. I gave myself the task of making peace with France, and I succeeded. And that's what John Adams said um, at the end of his presidency. John Adams, by the way, is not elected back as president. He only serves one term, and then he gets booted because everyone didn't like him. So he was very unpopular, not liked, but... He did achieve his goal in keeping peace with France. So, very controversial guy. And in class, this week, we're going to be talking about John Adams and should he be criticized for taking away rights or should he be rewarded for um, standing up for what he believed in and keeping peace. <laughs>